Hey everyone, welcome to Wildlife Inspired. I'm your host, Scott Keys. In today's video, we're gonna pretend you've got 500 hours to spend in your first year of wildlife photography, and you're gonna let me know how you spend it right after this. In today's video, I wanna discuss the idea of learning in your first year of wildlife photography. Now, this is an audience participation, so you're gonna watch this video. It won't be too long, but I really wanna know down in the comments how you personally would invest your time if you could do it over again, maybe you're in your first year of photography, or if you could advise somebody else. Imagine somebody comes up to you and says, hey, I'm just starting wildlife photography. I've never done it before. I just inherited a camera and I wanna start. They come to you for advice or maybe they pay you a consulting fee and they say, how do I spend my time? And you're gonna develop a plan for that person just based off of the number of hours that they are going to invest. Now, here's the, here's the premise. You get 10 hours a week, 50, We'll round it to 50 weeks a year. That's 500 hours. So you now are developing a plan for that person, or maybe you pretend you go back in time and you can relive your first year of wildlife photography. How would you invest that 500 hours? Now, one caveat here. This is a zero-sum analysis, which means for every hour invested doing one thing, it takes away an hour doing it somewhere else. So you only have 500 hours to work with. You're gonna go down in the comments and let me know how you would spend that. Now, to make that easy, I'm gonna list over here, I'm gonna list the criteria. So you have to follow these criteria. Maybe there's something I missed in there, but I'll be honest, I get things in my head. I've been thinking about this concept for like two weeks. How do you learn? How would you invest your first year of photography? And I just had to put it out in a video, probably to get it out of my head. So here's what we're gonna to do today. It's a zero sum game. You list all the hours they have to add to 500. You could also do this by percentage and it has to equal 100%. Now, I'm gonna do five big categories. And if you just wanna use the big categories, that's fine. Inside those big categories are gonna be some subcategories. So for example, I'm gonna list the five over here. We've got learning, that's gonna be one category. Following, I'll explain what that means in just a minute. Field work that is not involved shooting actual physical shooting and editing. Those are my five big categories. So they're listed over here. Now let's get into each category real quickly. I'll explain a little bit more about what I mean and I'll list some of the subcategories. Let's talk about learning. So learning obviously in the first year is a big part of it. In theory, everything you're doing is learning, but I wanna talk specifically about these categories. Number one is how much time would you invest actually learning your camera? So think about shutter speeds and reading the manual and watching YouTube videos on, on your camera or your lens and how it physically works. Remember, you've inherited this and you have no idea. Let's just assume it's a really good prosumer level camera with a, a pretty decent lens. So Nikon D500 with a 200 to 500 lens. How do you use that gear? How much time do you have to spend on that? Number two, how much time do you think about art theory and photography, learning, lighting, composition, uh, all of those things involved, color theory, all of those things involved in the artistic side. So not the camera and the gear, but the artistic side. How much time do you spend learning how to edit in your first year? Or would you advise somebody to learn editing in their first year? How much time would you spend researching wildlife? So talk, think more about, I'm researching, in my case, I'm researching birds, I'm learning their behavior, but I'm doing this online, not in the field. So this is all online learning. And then the last part of this learning is, how much time would you invest in feedback groups? So think you're, you have the ability to connect with peers that are around the same skill level. How much time would you spend getting feedback from them or soliciting feedback from them? All right, so that's the largest category here, and that's learning. Number two, following. How much time in your first year would you spend following social media, YouTube, for example, more for inspiration? So you're not really using these as learning tools. Now you're just following to see what other people are doing and what other people are sharing. So this is kind of the fluffy section here. Uh, how much time would you spend on social media, for example? Number three, field work. I have two categories here. How much time would you spend finding locations and how much time would you dedicate to observing the behavior of subjects in the field? Different than the learning part up top, this one is physically in the field, but not shooting. And then the last two categories are pretty straightforward. Number four, how much time would you spend shooting? Meaning physically in the location. We're gonna imagine 
for, for the sake of this, that transportation is free. You get to teleport. So we're not going to, your hours do not involve travel. So when I say shooting, I mean physically sitting there waiting for a subject or actively photographing a subject. And then finally, how much time would you spend editing? And you can't put zero down here because at the very least, you have to spend some time importing images, maybe sorting them or doing whatever, however you file them. But you also have to crop them a little bit and then post them to social media. So be realistic about this. I, I have a ratio for me that works, but for every time I'm out in the field, you know, if I get five or six images, five or 10 minutes, 15 minutes, you know, that's time spent in editing. So for every session in the field, I know that I need to commit some time to editing. So those are the criteria over there. Now, this is a quick video, so there's really not a whole lot else. Just think about it for a minute before you answer. To make it easier, down in the description, I've listed all this. So if you just want to copy and paste my listing, and then next to it, you can put your percentages or you can put the number of hours required. But remember, it's got to equal 500 hours or 100%. Now, I'm not going to spoil this by putting my thoughts up here. What I am going to do, though, in the first comment of this video, I'm going to put what I think I would advise somebody to do. And I'm wondering how much different it is. Will I put a bigger emphasis, for example, on learning Photoshop because I place a value on editing? I, I do think it's an important component. Would I spend more time maybe on field work, studying locations? Remember, it's your first year doing it. I will tell you, from first year to second year, these numbers would be very, very different for me. For example, I think I would probably spend much less time on, for example, learning how to use my camera and a lot more time on finding locations. But for this video, it's just your very first year. You've inherited the camera. You have no idea what you're doing. You get to write up the game plan for somebody else or you get to go back in time and relive your first year. How did I get to 500? Well, again, 10 hours a week. For I rounded it to 50 weeks. That's my 500 hours. I'm going to do another video, I think, that talks about the skill in, in wildlife photography, how much time it actually takes to become good. But that's for another day. For today's video, it's just your participation down in the comments. And now, if you're not subscribed to the channel, it's a great time to go ahead and click the subscribe button. There's also a little bell down there. Click that for notifications. Here's the thing with notifications. I'm not going to inundate you. You're going to get maybe one notification a week at the most. So don't be afraid to go ahead and click that. Then every time I put a new video out, you'll be notified that it's there. I always thank you for your support on the channel. Thanks for watching this video, and I hope we can continue to find inspiration in wildlife together.